declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That means what? He is our Father in heaven. We are stuck here on earth, and we don't understand what he's doing sometimes, right? Because his ways are different than ours. His thoughts are different, and we don't understand. And sometimes, even if we think in our minds we understand, we're still hurting. We're still confused. We're still struggling. And we have to learn to trust that he is our father and that he is in control and that he still knows what is best. And it doesn't mean we stop asking. We keep asking. Remember, Jesus basically wrote us an invitation saying, Bother God. He's your dad. Okay, bother him. Just like that friend came at midnight and bothered his friend. So we keep asking. Because remember, sometimes we think we're asking for something good, and God says, ooh, I can't give that to you. That might destroy your life. And we don't see how. Oh, that would be a blessing. That would be a good thing. And God says, no. I say, no, but Lord, that's a fish. That's good. And God looks at it and he says, no, that's a snake. I'm not giving that to you. So sometimes we misunderstand what is best for our lives as well. We have to learn to trust him. So there are going to be times that show up and that maybe we're experiencing right now in our lives that it's hard to see, you know, how we're going to get out or how we're going to survive because all we see is our pain. But you know what? Jesus understands that too. At the height of his own suffering, Jesus knew how he felt. I want to briefly look just at the seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. From the cross. And these are from the different Gospels that talk about Jesus being on the cross. Father, forgive them. Remember, he said, Father, forgive the people. They don't know what they're doing, right? So he calls him Father. He talks to the thief on the other cross, the one that believed him, and said, Jesus, this man, he's innocent, right? He says, today you will be with me in paradise. When he's telling John to take care of his mother, Mary, he says, Woman, behold your son and behold your mother. Okay? And then he says, in the middle of his suffering, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Notice, he doesn't call God Father. He says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forgotten me? Why have you abandoned me? Right? Jesus understands we suffer, and it's hard to see God as Father when we're suffering and when we're in pain. And Jesus knows that. Jesus knew it on the cross, and he cried out, My God. He did not say, My Father. Dad, where are you? He says, My God, why have you forsaken me? Okay? There are times in our lives, and don't feel bad. Don't feel ashamed that you feel that way. Jesus knows he himself experienced that, that kind of pain and suffering that says, I can't even understand you as my father right now because I'm suffering so much. And I say, my God, where are you? Why have you forgotten me? Why have you left me? There will be times that show up in our lives like that too. But it, and Jesus continues on. He says, I thirst. He says, it's finished. And at the end, he goes back and he says, Father, into your hand. I commit my spirit. And that is our goal. That no matter what happens, whatever we go through, even when we're in those places where we can only say, my God, what are you doing? That we learn to trust him and we get to a point that say, Father, into your hands I give everything. Like Jesus said, into your, into your hands I give my spirit. We can say, Father, into your hands I give everything, everything I'm going through. Everything I need, all my life, I give it to you. I give up. And I give it to you and I trust you as my Father again. So that's our goal. We have to trust that He's in control, that He knows what's best, that He's doing His will in our lives. So when you struggle and when you're hurting and when you don't understand, find that comfort in knowing that Jesus understands Keep working out your relationship with God so that you can say along with Jesus, 
Father, into your hands, I give this. Whatever the need is, whatever the situation is, I give it to you. We, we were listening to the radio on the way here. I was talking about two missionaries in Iran many years ago. And actually the, the man, who was, the, the preacher who was talking said he was in Iran and he was talking with a Christian believer there. And he said, well, how did you, how did you come to know, to know Jesus? Right, yeah, he was, he was a convert from um, Islam. He was Muslim. A Muslim Christian, well, Muslim convert to Christianity, become a Christian. He said, like, well, how? Why did you do, you know, how, how did this happen? How did you know, you know, how did you come to, to see God as your father, I guess, or, or how did you come to know Jesus as your savior? I can't remember exactly what they said on the radio. But anyway, he was asking him this. How did this happen in Iran with Muslims? And many years ago, and I think it was 1969, there was two, actually two missionary families there, and they had gone to a prayer meeting, and they were driving back, and they were in a car accident. And I think they had five children. There was three. The the one family that he talked talked about on the radio had three children, four children, and the other one had a baby, right? There was there was four children, one baby. It was, it was just four children all together. All the children in that car died. They lost their whole family. They're missionaries. They're in Iran. They're doing. They're they're doing God's work. How do we understand that? How do? They, but you know what? They still thanked God. They still praised God. They still kept on with their missionary work. And and Bertie actually found me this story online, but I haven't read it all yet. But I, I I noticed one one line they talked about when he woke up in the hospital bed. He woke up still, still giving God glory. Now that's. Wow. That, that's hard to understand, right? If you think about what it would mean to lose your whole family. But he still trusted and depended on God. And God used that to touch so many lives in Iran. So many people got saved. It wasn't only that one man. Many, many people converted from Islam and became Christians because they saw those missionary families respond to the death of their children. They still trusted God. They still depended on Him. And sometimes we think, I need this miracle to happen. But sometimes the miracle is getting through it with your, with your faith. Sometimes people need to see that. Oh, you know, we think, you know, if God does this, it would touch so many other people. It would, it would give Him glory. It would do all these things. And maybe God says, if you can trust me through it, through your suffering, if you can show your faith through it and your attitude through it, that you're depending on me and trusting me, that's a witness, that's a light that is giving me glory. But you know what? That might be harder for us to understand and accept than just if he would just solve it for us. <coughs> Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are a Father that hears us, that wants to answer our prayers. But sometimes, Father, we have a hard time because we know you're in control. We know you have all authority and all the power and all the supply and everything we need. But yet sometimes we struggle and we have experience in our lives and needs that aren't met. I pray you would encourage us to continue working on our relationship with you, that we would continue to ask, we would continue to seek you and knock you, knock on that door to meet our needs. That we wouldn't give up, but that we would carry on. And give us the faith to believe you and to trust and depend on you. Even though there are things and situations that show up that we don't understand, we just have to trust that your ways and your thoughts are different than ours. But that we will still praise you and worship you and obey you and follow you. And Father, most importantly, we pray for your spirit. That's what we need most every day is your spirit, your presence in our lives, teaching us, guiding us, protecting us, blessing us, using us. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this place, on this church, on these people here, on me, on all of us, Lord. 
And Father, we thank you. We pray we're a blessing to you on this Father's Day. We pray for, for our fathers, Lord, and our fathers in this church that aren't here today, that you will also touch them, help them to raise their children to follow and serve you. We love you and we thank you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.